Matthew Monahan here with Kiwi Connect, and uh, I'm here with Al Bramley at the New Frontiers 2015 Festival. And uh, Al, would love to uh, to get an introduction from you. Tell us a bit about who you are and, and what you're up to. Sure. Um, so I work. I'm CEO of a new entity that's been established between the New Zealand Department of Conservation and a philanthropic trust, which is the Next Foundation. And we've been established to try and crack some of New Zealand's big pest control problems so that we've got a new way of working in the future that's much more sustainable than how we do it now. Great. And can you frame for us this really big issue of pest control and pest problems in New Zealand and why it's, why it's so important? Sure. So in most places in the world, if you stop cutting down your habitat and you stop hunting the things that are important, ecosystems recover. But in New Zealand that's not the case. In New Zealand we have a number of invasive species that arrived very late because we were late to be discovered and those invasive species are still gnawing away at our native biodiversity and heading them towards extinction. Mm. So our, we don't have the luxury of doing nothing. We have to go after them if we're to maintain our diversity. Mm. And, and so earlier today we heard from uh, Lou Sanson at the Department of, of Conservation and it really became clear in that discussion I think to many of us that this pest control problem is one of the uh, primary uh, issues and challenges that we face as it relates to conservation in New Zealand and um, and so you know curious if you can talk a bit about where where are we at in terms of solving it addressing it and since you've spent so much time thinking about this um, you know your point of view on on what the possible solution sets are so at the moment our traditional model of pest control is around suppression so we knock them down to low levels and then we come back in a year's time or two years time and knock them down again. And majority of our work at the moment relies on aerial toxins to do that. And apart from that we also do a lot of ground based trapping but that never can reach usually very deep into the back country and it's very labour intensive. So if we're going to find sustainable solutions for the future we need to come up with another way. Now, in New Zealand, we've managed to clear a number of our offshore islands of pests completely. We've taken them off, removed them, and we've been able to defend them from reinvasion. We now do very large islands. We've done islands up to 11,000 hectares in size. What I want to do, and what my team want to do, is work out ways of bringing the zero predator environment to New Zealand mainland. And we're going to start with peninsulas. But at the moment, we're charged with finding the new tools and techniques that will enable us to do that. At the moment, the concept's really simple. We want to put some form of barrier on through the landscape, across a peninsula, but not a physical fence. And behind that barrier, we will remove the key predators, which are rats, stoats, and possums, and then maintain them at zero density through clever detection. But there's a number of technological hurdles that we need to solve to correct that problem. And can you talk about maybe a couple of the key technological hurdles that haven't we, we don't have a solution for yet and, and, and inviting anyone watching this video to think about? So the big one is detection. At the moment we do have technologies community willing that we can remove predators. We probably need better technologies but we've got some. We even can build barriers that look like they don't leak that much. There's lots of room for improvement in those, but they work kind of okay. But the big gap in the tool set is if a rat arrives tomorrow on a peninsula that's large, how do we find it fast enough before it builds a big population and undoes all the good that we've managed to achieve? So detection in a big landscape of an invader is our key problem. So, so we essentially detect the pests, we, we trap and remove the pests, and if any get through the barriers, um, we, we create barriers so that um, they can't penetrate certain areas. We've done pretty well at the barriers, um, and, and we've done pretty well, or we have some ideas of how we can really do the trapping and, and removal, but the detection and the early detection, especially yeah. when there's a small population set, yeah. that's that's the key area that we need to focus on. Have have the, has How much exp exploration has gone into uh, sensor technology, 
uh, drone technology, radio, radio frequency, you know, maybe at the trap level, you know, these types. Of, how sophisticated are we talking about the current experimentation? So it'd be fair to say we've been thinking about it for maybe a year. Um, and at the moment we have a little bit of technology that involves linking up sensors using UHF technology and sending to satellite. But to be honest, that's okay, but we're convinced there'll be better systems, systems that may rely on, um, I don't know, DNA technology to help us identify what's turned up in a catchment so that we can just sample the water around the coast edge or maybe some form of imaging that helps us realise what's arrived. Uh, the less infrastructure we put on the ground or have to put on the ground, the better because you've got to maintain it. So ideally we would have a system that might be aerially based or you could pulse in there at whatever frequency you need so the population doesn't get a chance to explode. Mm. And so one of the, the themes that was discussed today is just how um, while there are specific characteristics of this problem that are unique in New Zealand, it's really a global problem, a global issue at many levels. And i um, curious, just any reflections on um, the collaboration with other uh, uh, nations, uh, communities, and so forth globally, and what you see as a uh, potential role for New Zealand in that, as well as what you hope to, uh, to learn from others? Sure. Um, at the moment, it would be fair to say that New Zealand has a bit of a reputation in how to remove invasive soft islands. That's something that we do export, but it would be fair to say we haven't developed the technologies to do it on our mainland. If we can, say for example, find out ways of detecting and deterring rats, then those are going to be very exportable technologies. I mean, food security is often related to rat or rodent abundance. So although we're seeking the solutions for conservation and for biodiversity gain, we know that there'll be quite transferable technologies to a lot of other things that need to mm. yeah, get on top of rats. Or, mm. And one thing you mentioned to me just earlier in conversation is just how um, at this particular juncture in New Zealand's uh, time in history, there's a invitation for partnerships. And it sounds like your organization is established based on a uh, a multi-party partnership and alliance and just curious any reflections on on that as it relates to public and private sector and philanthropic sector and so yeah, forth sure. so it's it's quite a unique time i think in new zealand's history we w conservation used to be done over there and it was a nice to have mm. but i think increasingly we've realized and the world's realizing that biodiversity is essential for our well-being whether it be for our recreational enjoyment or whether it be for clean water or carbon sequestration it's becoming it's underpinning there's a realization going on it's underpinning our existence now the trouble is that in order for us to be economically socially and culturally wealthy we've got to look after those places and so the Department of Conservation in New Zealand is reaching out to New Zealand and the world to say this problem's big we want to maintain these amazing assets but we need help because this is a big problem mm -hmm. and so we're in a position where we're reaching out to the world saying have you got any good ideas for helping us solve our problems we would love if they become your problems and I'm sure there'll be spin-offs mm -hmm. so yep we're very keen to hear from people that have ideas or energy or time who would like to help us crack those problems. And so how, if someone has uh, energy or time or resources and they want to plug in on this, how do they do that? Okay, so uh, we've just formed a new entity only a fortnight ago, so this is brand new, mm. but they'd be welcome to contact me directly. At the moment, my email address is al at zip.org.nz. So it's pretty simple. I'll just say that again. Al at zip.org.nz. Z-I-P. Yep, Z-I-P. Yep. Z-I-P. Yeah, sorry, that's the English yeah. accent. <laughs> no, that's right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah .org.nz. And uh, yeah, we'll have a website up in the not too distant future. And also, if you go on the Next Foundation website, you'll see a link to us talking about the type of problems we're working on. Mm. Mm. Beautiful. Anything else you, you would like to share? Uh, just um, having been here today with you guys, it's... Um, it feels like a really special opportunity to link up with a bunch of people that are future focused, who are very open, and who also have a really positive outlook. So we appreciate that. Awesome. Thanks for being Thank here. Thank you for being here. Thanks for your time. Good. Cheers. Good.